everybody. Welcome to the program launch webinar with Algoma University. I am Harshita, your host for today, and I'm part of University Partnerships team at Upgrad Abroad. I am here today to welcome you to our webinar, where we'll be discussing the launch of our new bachelor courses with Algoma University. We're excited to partner with Algoma University, a leading Canadian university with a strong reputation for academic excellence. Algoma University offers a wide range of bachelor courses, including several with core programs, which allows students to gain valuable work experience while they study. So our webinar will feature guest, our guest for today is Brent. Please join me to welcome him. Brent is the Associate Vice President International Affairs at Algoma University. To give you a brief background about Brent, Brent has worked at Algoma University for past 10 years. In his current role, Brent is responsible for both domestic and international enrollment growth at the university. Under, the, under Brent's leadership, Algoma University achieved the highest growth rate of any Canadian university over the past five years. So Brent will be discussing the benefits of studying at Algoma University, the different bachelor courses that are offered, and any other details that he would like to share here. So we'll also be answering your questions during this webinar. So please feel free to ask anything that's on your mind. So without further ado, let's get it started. So over to you, Brent. Yeah. Great. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the introduction, Harshita, and um, thanks everyone for for joining uh, the webinar today to learn a little bit more about Oligoma University. Um, as Arshita mentioned, I've been working at the university for around 10 years. And over that time, I've actually been lucky enough to get to know India quite well. Um, I've traveled there over 25 times. And now I feel I feel very comfortable in uh, places like the Delhi airport and, and other parts of the country. It's one of my, my favorite places to visit. Um, so always excited to connect with with Indian students and talk a little bit about the university. So with that, I will share my screen. Hopefully it goes well. I've got a presentation to go through. Um, feel free to put any questions in the chat. It might might be hard for me to keep an eye on it, but Harshita, go ahead and interrupt if you want me to take any questions as we go. And if Please. not, um, I can take them at the end. But this is a uh, partnership with Upgrad is something where we're really excited about because it provides another avenue for international students to come and study at Algoma University. So let me share my screen. And it says that I cannot share my screen, Harshita. Um, Arushi, can we just enable the screen sharing, please? Yes. Okay, looks like we're good now. So I mentioned, um, Harshita mentioned and I, that I work at um, Algoma University. So Algoma University is a public Canadian university located in Ontario, uh, Canada. We have three campuses there. So Ontario, for those that are unfamiliar with it, is the biggest province in Canada. It's right in the middle of Canada. Um, a lot of famous Canadian things. Toronto is in Ontario, Ottawa, Niagara Falls, a lot of things that you think about when you're uh, thinking about Canada are in Ontario. And it's also the biggest labor market in Canada, which is why a lot of international students are, are choosing to study there. We've got three campuses. Uh, our most popular campus is located in Brampton. Brampton is part of the greater Toronto area. I know a lot of you would be familiar with Brampton. You have either friends who studied in Brampton or family that lives close to Brampton. So it's about a 10 minute drive from the Toronto International Airport, um, ninth largest city in Canada. I'll go into some de more details a bit later. We have another campus in Sault Ste. Marie. Sault Ste. Marie is a medium sized Canadian city, about a one hour flight from uh, Toronto. So I sometimes describe it, it's like going from Delhi to uh, Chandigarh, similar kind of distance. If you were gonna drive, it takes most of a day. If you're gonna fly, it's a, a one hour flight and it's for students who are interested in a little bit quieter part of life. And then we have another campus in Timmins, which I won't highlight today, but it's it's quite small and, and specialized. 
two points that I like to talk about when I'm just talking about Algoma University. One, Algoma is the fastest growing public university in Canada. Um, we'll have around 12,000 students this year uh, and expecting to have close to 18 or 20,000 next year. And it's also one of the most diverse uh, universities in Canada. We're very proud of that. Um, about uh, half of the students in our bachelor's programs are international students from all over the world, from around 70 countries around the world. And we also have a big um, local indigenous population that we're proud of. So in terms of uh, a bit more detail overview, I mentioned that we're a public university. So in Canada, public universities are the top tier of education. They're the best um, educational institutions in the in the country. Uh, graduates from public universities earn the, get the best jobs, they earn the higher highest wages. Canadians go to uh, public universities, almost they all want to send their kids to, to public universities. And we also feel um, that you have the best chance of visa success rate uh, coming to Canada if you're applying to a public university. With a bachelor's from a public university in Canada, you can work anywhere in the world and you can go on to get a uh, study in a master's program at any university in the world. We've got lots of uh, programs. We've got about 30 bachelor programs at the university. I wanna highlight two specifically today because that's what we've partnered with um, Upgrad on for now, but business and uh, computer science. And those are our two most popular programs. They're what we're known for uh, in Canada, and largely people are choosing those programs uh, because of the employment rates when you graduate. There's um, business graduates are very employable, they can study a number of different fields in business, and computer science, I think the, the tech industry is growing everywhere, and with a degree in computer science, you can work in, in any sector of the economy anywhere around the world. Um, well, we're fast growing. We've still maintained, uh, been able to maintain smaller class sizes it means by having lots of classes. Um, so average class size at Algoma is around uh, 30 students, just under 30 students. And if you're participating in this upgrad pathway, you'll be entering into year two or year three when you come to the university. So um, it'll be nice to be in those smaller classes. I think it's something students don't think about, like in <clears throat> international students don't. In Canada at a university, like it's very common for classes to have two or three or even 500 students in your class, um, which is not good for, it's difficult for anyone. It's difficult for Canadian students. It's difficult for international students. I think at Algoma, the class size would be more what you're accustomed to um, studying, you know, in India or wherever you're studying right now would be a little bit of an easy, easier transition. You get to know your classmates and you get to know the professors pretty well. Um, I hope you're all interested in coming to study in Canada. Um, we certainly feel that uh, in my opinion, Canada is the best country in the world for international students to come study in. Um, well, I mean, quality of education is very high. I'm going to get into the cost a little bit later, but value is very good compared to some other popular destinations. Canada is very affordable, but also Canada is very welcoming uh, to international students. Canada is a uh, country that wants international students to come. As soon as you land in Canada as an international student, you'd have the same rights uh, that I do as a Canadian. You have the same health care rights um, or access to health care. You can work while you're a student in Canada. And I think most importantly for lots of people, um, you can stay and work when you're done. Um, I'll talk about it a little bit later, but in any of these upgrad pathways, you're going to be eligible for a three-year postgraduate work permit when you're, when you're done. Um, and that's really the, if you're interested in maybe moving to Canada at some point in your life, the best way to come is, is as a student. Often when I'm traveling, like Canada's got, is the opposite of many places. Canada has lots of room and no people. We've got a huge country with very few people in it. So very different from um, lots of places I travel to in Asia. So we're, we're interested in students coming to study and then if they choose to, uh, staying when they're done their studies. So I mentioned that we've got uh, three campuses. So our campus in um, Sault Ste. Marie, and I should say first that if you're interested in business or computer science, the two programs we've partnered with Upgrad on, both programs are available at either campus. So it's really your pick. Uh, advice that I give to students is that the quality of the academic program is the exact same at either campus. Students are choosing between campuses based on what um, lifestyle suits them a little bit better. Are they 
more comfortable in um, a smaller, quieter city? Or do they prefer to live in a busy place like Brampton? So uh, the picture on the screen right now is a picture of uh, the front of our Sault Ste. Marie campus. Um, I'm a, <laughs> you can see the window that I'm, the office that I'm sitting in right now in this photo. But it's, I would say like a traditional Canadian university campus. As you can see, it's got lots of green space, right? Like lots of space. Um, population of this campus is around 2,000 students. Uh, population of the city is around 100,000 people. People are choosing this campus because <clears throat> they're interested in a little bit quieter life. Like I would say that life is very easy here. <laughs> um, it's easy to find accommodation close to campus. Accommodation is probably a little bit less expensive than it might be in a bigger city, like part of the greater Toronto area. Transit is not busy those sorts of things. Um, but you still have all the um, all the amenities you would anywhere else. Um, the Canada is like it's very developed. So um, there's good amenities really anywhere that you want to live. This is a full service campus. So if you studied here, the library, cafeteria, housing, all available on campus uh, if you wanted to. And Sault Ste. Marie is also just a last point. It's part of a rural and northern immigration pilot program. So RNIP. So this is just a program in Canada encouraging people to move to um, outside of the major centers, like outside of Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver. So it's uh, a bit of a fast track immigration pathway if that's a, a priority for for you. Next campus okay. I'll talk about is, is I'm sorry for interrupting. So one of the questions uh, asked by uh, through our poll was that what is the living cost in Canada? In this case, if we talk about the campuses involved in Algoma University, then what would be the living cost? We understand that um, as per the immigration website that 10,000 uh, CAD is required. Uh, but in this, in these uh, camp, for these campuses, what will be the living cost? If you can highlight a little bit about it. Yeah, sure. So uh, <clears throat> Canada can, it can be expensive. Um, so if you're staying in on-campus housing, so you're going to live in a residence, and that includes a meal plan, you have, you have your own bedroom, but you share a bathroom, that would be about um, $1,000 per month uh, for that cost. If you decide to get um, an apartment um, in, a, in either in a house with other students or, uh, or with a family, you probably rent, I think, is about $600 per month. Uh, and that doesn't include your food. Um, a lot of students choose that option because um, they just pay monthly. They don't have to pay. Um, if you're on campus housing, you have to pay for half the year up front. A lot of students prefer to rent their own place and then get a, maybe a part-time job to assist with groceries and stuff. But it's um, you should be prepared for the for the cost of living. I mean, with that come high wages. Um, so part-time jobs in Canada, the wages are also quite high. But I think you need at least a thousand dollars a month to live. Um, so that would include your um, accommodation and uh, food. You can always, I mean, the more people you're willing to share with, that's the way to lower the accommodation fee, right? If you're willing to share a bedroom with a friend, you can cut the cost in half. If you're willing to live in a house with um, eight people instead of four people, um, that's the kind of way to, to save a little bit on accommodation. Nice thing in, if you're in Sault Ste. Marie, I would say transportation cost is almost zero, like, um, because public transit is very affordable and you can walk most places. If you were going to study in Brampton, you might want to consider another maybe $200 a month for transportation. Um, so public transit, buses, subways, that kind of thing. Brampton, uh, <clears throat> just quickly, is an urban campus. So in Brampton, our campus is <clears throat> right on the main intersection in, um, in the city of Brampton, downtown, right across from City Hall. It's in uh, commercial buildings. So there's not the green space uh, that you see in Sault Ste. Marie. Instead, what you get is 
um, being located in the center of like this super bustling, big, busy Canadian city where in Brampton, we would say the, <clears throat> the city is your campus. So we don't have a cafeteria in Brampton, but if you walk out the doors from campus, there's, you know, 200 restaurants that you can eat in within um, a couple hundred meters and uh, food from all over the world. Brampton is, um, you know, maybe the most diverse city in Canada. It's certainly got a large uh, South Asian population, but also big communities from, from other parts of the world. So um, we don't have a athletic center there, but our students have access to a local athletic center. We don't have our own library. We've partnered with the local library. So it's um, a different experience, but it's, um, I mean, one that would not be uncommon <laughs> to people in uh, coming from Asia. And if you're, if you think you'd be more comfortable in a busy place, it's, it's very much like being in Asia. The city's always alive. There's always, there's always people around. The only thing I would say, if you're going to Brampton, many people um, have family or friends there that are gonna help them with accommodation, but you need to think about that before you get there um, because it's a bigger place. It, you know, it's a little bit Im more important on where you're living and uh, what's your access to transit? How are you going to be getting around? So if you're coming to Brampton, think about that early. We have a housing office where we can help. Uh, you might have family or friends or no other students that can help. But if you just show up and expect to find a house right away, it would be, um, could be a problem for short, uh, short term. And, um, you know, prices are a little bit higher. Brampton's still affordable for uh, Toronto area, but, um, but a little bit higher. Um, so in terms of programming, um, so we have around 30 different uh, bachelor programs at the university. I'll spend uh, time today highlighting uh, mostly computer science and, and business, but just to know that we're not, Algoma is not only a computer science and business university. So you're gonna have, even if you're studying those programs, you're gonna have friends who are in programs like biology, psychology, community development. You have, um, elective courses in Canada. So you'll have some courses that we require to take and then some that you can uh, take just based on your interest that'll be in subjects outside of, you know, what you're choosing to study. So it, it could be music, could be um, Indigenous studies, psychology, that sort of thing. But you'll meet students with lots of different interests. Computer science, uh, we have a Bachelor of Computer Science program. If you wanted to specialize in a certain area within that program, uh, we have uh, areas in computer game technology. So if you're interested in working with the gaming industry in the gaming industry, that industry I think now is almost as big as the film industry in, in Canada in terms of uh, size and employment. And then also in uh, mobile software engineering is another area you can specialize in. So mobile software engineering is app design. Like if you're interested in creating, uh, you got a great idea for an app um, that you wanna create, you can take a subject like that. Business, uh, there's lots of traditional majors within business, so accounting, economics, human resource management, marketing. Algoma also has options in uh, aviation management and esports. Aviation management is not to fly planes, it's to manage airlines. So if you wanted to work at, I mean, Canada, Air Canada is the big one, but if you wanted to work for um, like Air India um, that, or Vistara, that sort of thing, that would be a program that you could take to do that. And then eSports is again, like the management of eSports, which is a booming industry in, in Canada. It's really taking off. One thing that's unique about Algoma is um, the different lengths of degrees that we have here. So uh, our business program, our BBA program is exclusively a four-year program. So you do one year, uh, in India with upgrad, it'll take you three years to graduate. You do two years in India with upgrad, it'll take you two years to get a BBA degree from Algoma. Our computer science uh, degree is like a lot of our others where we have three and four year options in the degree. Um, so you can do it in, if you did one year in uh, India, you could come and complete a degree in, in two years in Canada or two years in India and then one year in Canada if you chose the three year option. That's the most appealing option for international students. Probably 80% of them are choosing for the three-year degree option in computer science because 
it cuts down on time and, and cost. Um, and there's no real difference in terms of employment opportunities. So the three-year degrees are designed for people who want to go on to the work world when they're done. Their, their goal is to, they're going to university to get a job. Students who are choosing the four-year degree, they still want to work, <laughs> but the four-year degree uh, would make you eligible for master's programs down the road. So that is the big difference. So you can think about what you want to do if you're thinking about applying to a master's program in Canada, for instance, then you would want to choose the four-year degree. If your number one priority is get your degree, uh, you know, take advantage of your postgraduate work permit, work and get a job, work in Canada, then the three-year degree is the most affordable way to do it, and it's what what most students are choosing. If you choose a three-year degree now, it doesn't mean you can't do the fourth year later, and that's something that also that um, many international students are choosing to do. Their um, their plan is graduate with three-year degree, get a job, get their PR, then come back for fourth-year degree and master's when it's um, you know they're paying a, a local tuition rates, you know, sort of thing. Um, you won't find that at most Canadian universities, so it's a real edge for Algoma. So, in Brent, terms of... before, Brent, yeah, oh. sorry oh. for no, interrupting you. Yeah, so one question um, which we are like hearing a lot is uh, people want to know about the co op program fund, and two people want to know about what are the post uh, study work visa opportunities for the learners once they exit from, you mentioned that there are three year, uh, three year degree programs and four year, so which will be uh, the more beneficial one in terms of both the co-op programs as well, and also in terms of the post-study work visa. Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, in terms of the post-study work visa, it uh, either program is fine. So in Canada, the, the longest postgraduate post work permit you can get is a three year work permit. So to qualify for a three-year work permit, you need to complete two years of education in Canada. So um, for, to say, computer for a three-year degree, if you did one year in India and two years in Canada, you qualify for a three-year postgraduate work permit. For the business degree, if you did two years in India, two years in Canada, you qualify for a three-year postgraduate work permit. If you come to Canada for three or four years, for the entire degree, say, you still qualify for a three-year postgraduate work permit. That is the max. So lots of students are interested in pathways where they spend two years in Canada because that gets them kind of the maximum work permit for the lowest amount of time. If you come to Canada for just one year, you only get a one-year postgraduate work permit. So one year, one-year permit, two years, three-year work permit, three years, three-year work permit. So that's now you understand why lots of people want to come for two years, because you almost get like a bonus um, postgraduate work permit. Um, and with upgrade, and I think upgrade, we can choose, the learners can have the option of choosing two years on here in India and two years on campus at Algoma. So yeah. they're having the opportunity of directly opening their route for masters also by yep. having the four years degree one. And secondly, they also have the PSW. Uh, they, they have the option for getting that as well because they're spending two years in Canada. So yep. there are two kinds yeah. of benefits yeah, that they're getting uh, if they choose this pathway with upgrad. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And I think, I mean, that's why a lot of students in, in India are choosing college programs in my opinion yeah. is because they're two years in length. With this upgrad partnership, you're yeah. going to get a two, you can come to Canada for two years, but yeah. you're graduating with a university degree instead of a college program. And if you looked at job postings in Canada, most good jobs requirement is a bachelor's degree. Um, that's what you yeah. need for most of the, the top jobs. And that's what you need for a master's program. So I think that's what, that's what's got us so excited about, about this program in, in particular. Um, Harshita mentioned, uh, asked me to talk about co-op programs a little bit. Yeah. So co-op is available with both of these programs, business and computer science, and is, is very popular with uh, students. So 
the co-op it basically is a opportunity to uh, gain some work experience while you're while you're studying so um you know, everybody can get a part-time job while they're studying in Canada, but a part-time job is not necessarily going to be in the field that you're studying in, right? Like you might be studying computer science, but your part-time job is at a, like a market or a grocery store or something like that. The, the advantage of co-op is that, I mean, we're connecting with you with employers where you're going to work a position similar to what you're studying. So you're going to gain work experience in a field that you want to be working in when you graduate. Um, the way it works at Algoma is you would take a semester off from studying. You would study for a semester, then work full time, then study for a semester, alternate like that. The study is paid um, and the, the, pay is, the pay is quite good. I think the advantages um, for international students are when you're, one, when you're applying for jobs, you'll have some uh, Canadian work experience on your, on your resume. So Usually if you're applying for jobs in Canada, their uh, employers are gonna wanna see a couple of things like um, work experience would be one in Canada and they're gonna ask for references. They're gonna wanna call people that you've, that you've worked for or studied for. I think it's much easier for them if your references are in Canada, um, it's easier for them to get a hold of them. And unlike in a lot of parts of the world, Canadians work when they're young. <laughs> so if I was at a Canadian high school, almost all of them would have part-time jobs. Um, so for you, I think it's advantage to work when you come here because it'll put you on a more of a level playing field with um, like local students that you're gonna be competing for, for, for jobs and that sort of thing. So it's popular. When you apply to Algoma, if you're interested in co-op, it's part of the application form. So you can check that you would like to participate in co-op and then we can help you organize that uh, ahead of time before you get here. You can, uh, you can still declare that when you arrive, but it's easier for everyone if you, when you're applying or where you're planning to come uh, that you work with your counselors at UpGrad or whatever to identify that you're interested in, in co-op. Um, in terms of admission, requirements. So um, in order to come to Algoma, you need a 2.3 GPA at UpGrad. I'm not going to focus on that. I think on the next slide is where it talks about getting maximum uh, transfer credit for your time at UpGrad. Um, there is a language requirement. So most students are writing the IELTS. So at Algoma, it's uh, six in each band. Six overall and six in each band is the, the IELTS re requirement. Um, if you want to apply, and also same for it, it's the same as the SDS requirement if you're applying uh, through that. But we also accept um, like lots of lots of uh, tests, Duolingo, uh, TOEFL, that kind of thing are all acceptable. In terms of um, transfer credits, and this is, I mean, this is the selling point of the upgrad program is that you're earning credit for what you're doing at uh, with upgrad. So if you have a 3.0 uh, CGPA with UpGrad, you're gonna receive uh, full credit for everything you studied there. So if you studied for one year at UpGrad, you're gonna receive one year of credit to come to Algoma. If you're gonna complete two years at UpGrad, you're gonna complete, uh, you're gonna get two years of credit to come to Algoma University. Um, so that's incredible, like incredible value to be able to get full credit, you come here, if you did two years in India, you're now uh, entering year three in, in Canada. So that, that I think is the most appealing part of this partnership is that you're getting credit for what you're doing um, and complete credit. You're, you're gonna come here and it would be as though you did your first one or two years here at the university in Canada. If your GPA is between 2.7 and 2.99, you're still gonna receive transfer credit, uh, just not likely full. We're gonna look at it on a course by course basis. So the courses, likely the courses where you uh, did very well in. So I can see, you know, transfer credit awarded for courses where you have a 2.7. So for all of those courses, you're gonna receive transfer credit. Um, so you might not get the full two years, but maybe you'll get one and a half um, or something like that, which is still pretty exceptional to be able to earn that much credit um, to come to Canada below 2.7, you can come, uh, but no transfer credits. 
in terms of tuition, so what so what are you saving <laughs> by by earning this transfer credit in uh, at home? So our tuition is around uh, twenty thousand Canadian dollars per year. So uh, I mean, I, it's expensive, but we feel like very good for a, a public university in Canada. In fact, it's the lowest uh, tuition of any public university in in the province of Ontario. It's very on par with um, like a what many of the colleges are charging, like Humber College or Sheridan College are charging very similar tuition. But this is a university degree that you can take to apply for jobs or you can take to apply to master's programs. So there's a lot of value in this. By cutting, by uh, earning some of your degree with upgrad, you can see how much you're saving per year. And that doesn't include the, this uh, sheet doesn't, or slide doesn't include the living costs. So really you're probably going to save about 30,000 Canadian dollars per year uh, by starting your program with UpGrad in, uh, in India, which is, which is fantastic. There are scholarships available to uh, students that are applying to Algoma. The most awaited question and the most uh, number of times, highest number of times this question has come. So everybody was waiting for this particular slide to know about oh, scholarship. Oh, I'm glad I put it in. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So all of our scholarships are based on your uh, academics. Uh, there's no uh, additional application and we'll tell you what scholarship you're qualifying for when you apply. So your LOA will have it listed um, right on it when you apply. But so for us, um, the biggest scholarship is $5,000 per year. So that's about 25% uh, off um, your tuition studying at, uh, at the university. So it makes a big difference. Um, I think it's quite generous. These scholarships are, are unlimited. Um, so there's no cap on the number that we give out. So if everyone qualifies for the $5,000 scholarship, we can uh, give out the $5,000 scholarship. Surely 5,000, we would say, I don't have the exact uh, upgrad GPA, but we would consider that equivalent to an A plus president's award, uh, a Dean's Award B plus and Award of Excellence B B average. So almost everyone who's coming is going to be eligible for for some form of scholarship to to help with the cost uh, a little bit. I talked about uh, I won't I won't touch on accommodation other than it's something that you should think about before you come because I already uh, talked about it a little bit earlier. In Sault Ste. Marie campus, we have residents on campus. In Brampton, we're building one. It's not ready yet, but there is a homestay program and a housing team that can help you. Um, so just my advice would just be, um, even before you get your visa, but definitely when your visa is approved, start planning on uh, thinking about where you're going to live. And co-op we talked a bit about earlier, so I won't touch on that, but I, I'd also mentioned that you can uh, you're eligible to work when you're in Canada, so you can work part-time um, during your studies and full-time on any kind of study breaks, which is like um, summer holidays, uh, Christmas holidays, that kind of jobs. There's, uh, there's jobs on campus uh, and off campus that you can apply to, and lots of jobs in, in Canada. We've got um, Canada doesn't have enough people <laughs> and, and uh, we're all aging. So lots of jobs for young people who are, are interested in working. And that was it uh, for me. So I can take, I haven't been paying attention to the queue, but there's questions. I'll stop sharing my screen and maybe answer some questions now. So Brent, one of the questions uh, is related to the jobs that you were mentioning, that there are on-campus jobs available. And also, even if I talk about co-op, then uh, uh, what kind of uh, job opportunities are available? If we can name the job roles and kind of salaries that they can draw uh, once completing bachelors from Algoma or, in, or like what kind of opportunities do they have? So when they're complete, uh... Upon if I talk about if I talk about the business administration and uh, this particular course, the computer science course, then for these two yeah. courses, what are the job opportunities available along with salaries? Sure. So 
uh, salaries, I think, would start at around uh, 50,000 Canadian dollars per year, like for a university graduate. So with business, I mean, people are going to work in, uh, like we hire business grads, so it depends a little bit on the background, but you'll work in, um, often in a finance office, like accounts payable, accounts receivable. If you take the HR option, you might be working in uh, HR role in uh, like sort of entry entry levelish positions, I guess, but salaries will be around fifty thousand Canadian per year, maybe maybe a little bit higher, but that's usually kind of starting salary in Canada. Um, and then in um, they grow pretty quickly. I would say within five years, you easily can be making like um, seventy thousand Canadian per year is pretty pretty standard. Um, computer science, uh, our program is really. Uh, like a software development program, like that's what we're training people to do. And that's what most people are doing. So they're working as developers. Um, computer science salary might be a little bit higher, maybe around 60,000 starting salary um, because there's so much demand for tech workers. The salary is like a, a little bit higher there for sure. Thanks. And is there any uh, gap year also uh, that is a criteria here in terms of uh, once the learner completes class 12, then are there any gap years also applicable? No, Algoma has uh, no limit uh, on the gap. Okay, great. So apart from this, one of the questions would be, that um, if I talk about core programs, we understand that these programs, they come along with core programs. Are there any internship opportunities also that are provided by the university? There are. So in Canada, hmm. co-op is paid work. Yeah. I, and I know sometimes in uh, India, people use, that's what they mean when they say internship. If if it's an internship in Canada, we usually don't pay you. So when you're looking for uh, like these programs, these two programs have co-op or paid paid work experience. We have some other programs with internships, uh, which means we're going to give you work experience, but we're not going to pay you for it. It's uh, like volunteer work. Um, there's lots of volunteer work available. I think most students are interested. So that's just a difference in language in Canada. So co-op means like paid paid work experience. So um, that, that's, I think, what most students should be looking for. And so when you come, you can't do your work on your first term. Like, you can't just show up in your first term. You've got to study first, right? So you would study your first semester. You can study with uh, Algoma, like, doing coursework. Uh, and then you could explore co-op after that, like, doing a work placement after that. But you, we've we got to make sure you're, you're fit for work placement before we, uh, before we send you to one. Great, great. And do uh, learners also have the opportunity, like while they're doing these co-op programs with certain employers, so do they have the opportunity of getting full-time employment also through these employers? Yeah, yeah, that's why most, I mean, that's why most do it. I know for sure with yeah. um, like a lot of accounting firms uh, locally, they end up hiring the graduates. If you do a good job, um, that's why employers want co-op uh, placements because they want to be able to Meet what does, before they hire them what does time. Algoma's ex, yeah what does algoma's experience says with their learners yeah many 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 end up getting full-time jobs where they're doing their placements great thank you for that yeah no problem yeah so uh, in a nutshell if we'll say that with upgrad the two kind of courses that we're offering firstly the learner a collaboration which is between upgrad and algoma university Firstly, the learner is saving a lot of money because uh, they are doing two years in India and then they are moving two years abroad. Now, this program is also coming up with co-op co opportunities where they'll also get the opportunity of one, where they're getting paid and two, they have the opportunity of getting a full-time employment as well with the same employers who are part of their co-op programs. And then also uh, they get the opportunity to apply since they're staying two years in Canada. So one, they're getting the opportunity to apply for a master's course. They're eligible because they have a four-year undergraduate degree. And secondly, that they have a post-study work visa opportunity. 
Yeah, those are the benefits for sure. The benefits yeah. are, yeah. you know, cutting down on the cost by studying with uh, cost and time in yeah. Canada, which you see from the, it's huge savings. You know, you're saving at least $60,000, 60,000 $60, Canadian dollars by studying for two years with UpGrad. And then you're getting the best, um, you know, the best work credential we have, like a four-year degree, which can get you either uh, opportunities to work right away or masters down the road qualifies you for a maximum postgraduate work permit. So, but all the reasons why we're excited about this partnership and we think it's a great opportunity for students. Great, great. So one of the questions is, can any work experience will qualify for the admission process? Not, uh, not for us. We just look at the yeah. academic background. Yeah. And what would be the criteria? Like if you can highlight a little bit about the criteria for uh, uh, in apart from uh, the CGPA, any other, is there any other criteria? Just, that uh, just C CGPA and uh, language requirement. So 6.0 uh, on IELTS, that's it. Great. So I think that's it for now from my side. And yeah, no, same here. It's been great. Uh, Great yeah. joining. We're very, very excited um, about this partnership and that students will be studying with UpGrad. Um, yeah, happy to do these any, any, uh, anytime you like. So if you have questions, you can reach out to the to the UpGrad team. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure they can handle. Yeah. Answer them if they can't. They can connect with me. Yeah. And everyone, if you have any questions, you can put down in the chat box. We can wait for two, three minutes. Apart from that, we have also shared uh, links to our social media platforms and also a link for our joining our WhatsApp group. So please feel free to join those groups and share your questions and we'll get them answered and we'll provide you the best guidance possible. I think most of the questions we have covered, we're not getting any more questions here. Yeah, no, that's great. So yeah, yeah. I will sign. Oh, someone's yeah. raised their hand, I thought. Yeah. Just one second. Let me check the chat box. Yeah, no problem. Can you elaborate the scope of food technology? I think. Yeah, we, so we don't have, we don't offer courses in food technology. Um, that's probably uh, closer to a biotechnology program. I think for us focuses really business and computer science, these pathways with, uh, with UpGrad. Sure. Thanks, Brent. So I think that's it for now. And so all I'd like to say here is thank you for joining us today everyone and thanks a lot Brent for sharing all the information related to Algoma. We have get we we got to know a lot about the co-op programs and also about the opportunities that we are now having been with this kind of collaboration with Upgrad and Algoma University. So everyone we hope you find our webinar informative and helpful. If you have any question please feel free as I've mentioned to join these groups and uh, our, ask your questions there. We would like to thank uh, Brent again for taking time to join us today. And we hope you'll join us for our next webinar also. Until then, stay up to date on our latest news and events by following on, us on social media. Links I've already shared with you. So we have added those links in the chat box so you can just follow those links. Thank you again for attending. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you.